about to land in Cuba to document Hurricane Matthew. This will be my first hurricane documentation in the country of Cuba. Something I've honestly dreamed about since a kid. I've never been to Cuba, it's always been prohibited. So we made it to Havana. There's my hotel. I'm gonna spin around. We've got some old cannons here. And when I spin around more, there is the Atlantic Ocean. And straight 90 miles that direction is Key West. I can't tell you how many times I've been at the other side looking this way. And now I'm finally here in Cuba looking back at Key West. How cool is that? Nacional de Cuba. Big storm going up right on top of it. Look at those towers there exploding. out the hotels on the coastline and see what kind of shelter they they'll give me I'm looking at the Los Amigos and um, Carolola Carolas something like that I'm not pronouncing it right the car just stalled so it sort of took me off my train of thought here but uh, anyways I'll pan around I made it finally we got Hurricane Matthew coming this way Good morning from Guantanamo, Cuba. Preparations are currently underway, waiting for the arrival of Hurricane Matthew. Guantanamo, Cuba. Preparations are currently underway for the arrival of Hurricane Matthew. We're driving through the streets here of downtown, and you can see people, there's long lines, people are preparing for the arrival of this hurricane. Uh, businesses are boarding up, people are stocking up on water and food. It could be a long several days here as conditions will start to deteriorate later today. So, here we are in Cuba, waiting for Hurricane Matthew to arrive. This is the hotel I've chosen in Guantanamo. The fellas up there are preparing some things, not sure what they're doing. But this will be my, uh, kind of my backdrop, or I think where I'll be riding out the storm most likely. I'm not real thrilled about being over 30 miles inland, but there's nowhere on the coast to get to. Um, I'm going to check later tonight and see if there's some small towns. Might try to get to the coast first thing in the morning. But for now, I'm going to get some sleep. So these are the downtown streets of Guantanamo in Cuba. You can see there is hardly anybody out here. A lot of things are boarded up. And I need to get back to the hotel. The last five hours was hectic driving through the mountains um, to get here. Uh, 
here in the lobby in Baracoa and have a Category 4, possibly Category 5 hurricane heading this way. Um, could get into the eye. I'm going to get some sleep. Tomorrow's going to be a really big day. So here it is Tuesday morning, uh, we're here in Baracoa in Cuba and we're awaiting the arrival of Hurricane Matthew. <clears throat> I'm walking the downtown streets here and the buildings here are very good, concrete, um, a lot of good structures. <clears throat> I'm going to be riding it out in a hotel about two blocks over, but I also may go to the castle, which is up on top of this hill back here. And uh, I don't know, lots of palm trees. It could be a pretty interesting scene when the winds start picking up. Uh, it's possible we could get the eye, but it's looking like maybe the eye will pass just off the coast. But we will get those wraparound winds coming out of the north, so it's going to be an onshore wind coming off the water. out of this window here there's all everything's boarded up but I'm able to get a shot. The eye wall is probably about two to three hours away. Uh, so we'll see what happens here in a few hours. The sun's probably gonna be setting soon. The worst part is gonna come through after dark. Uh, but overall it's you know we're getting some pretty strong gusts now. And uh, it's only gonna get worse as time goes. Alright, so the winds are starting to pick up here in Baracoa and we are shutting the doors, shutting the windows and uh, boarding up. So we're not going to see what's going on outside anymore, we're just going to hear it. We're in here uh, having a little fiesta in Baracoa. We've got food, we have drinks. You can see we've got no view outside. Oh yeah, we're on Manic Club. There we go. The door is boarded up. Everything's boarded up. So from this point on, we are only going by audio. What we can hear going on outside. I'm a good at that. Oh yeah, this this dog was on the street. Have we named him yet? Matthew. Matthew, of course. So we brought Matthew inside. Yes. He's scared too. But he's safe, just like us. Thank you. 
got some music, we've got a little relaxation because this was very stressful to go through that aisle. Seems the winds have changed direction a little bit and now it's it has started to take part of this roof down. Uh, it's just the underside, it's not the main part of the roof, so we're okay. Uh, but it's really noisy. So here we are, we're still holding up inside the lobby. And uh, we have to shut these uh, the doors here because the wind keeps blowing them in. Just keeping everything as the wind's uh, starting to travel in a little bit. We were just in the end of the eye. Back up. We're assessing some of the damage here this morning in Barracoa. And you can tell the winds came ripping through here last night. That blue building over there is where I rode it out. That's the hotel I stayed. And uh, pretty typical the damage you see. After a long night of strong winds. So this is basically the scene here this morning in Barakoa. Uh, we've got a lot of destruction. A lot of concrete walls came down. This area here took a much harder hit than where I rode out the storm. Um, they had storm surge come through here for sure. Just gutted these houses. That's a disaster. The folks here at Barracoa are starting to clean up. But one thing that has really caught my eye is this shipping container. It was not here when the storm started. Uh, they must have received some kind of storm surge here to bring in, and I don't think the wind did that. So they definitely had storm surge. This must have floated in in between these two houses. Um, like I said, the cleanup has begun here in Barracoa. The wind came ripping through here. Um, see these, these structures here. Uh, the overall structures have survived, but the roofs were ripped off, and there's all kinds of uh, concrete walls blown down. It's pretty bad here. Look at these trees snapped. I, I always like to look at the vegetation and to get a feel for the wind. And these trees are pretty much uh, ruined. I mean, look at this piece of this tree here. And there's no actual tree there, so it must have broken off. It, actually, I think it came from right there. There's the part where it broke, and this is where the top part of the tree ended up. All up in these people's yards here. So these are some of the structures that are right on the coast. They took the full force of the wind last night. Uh, the wind was ripping off the water, basically coming right into this area here. So we're starting to assess what kind of damage occurred. Uh, there's the ocean over there. So that wind just came ripping right into these structures here. So here is a view of Barracoa. You can see lots of damage to the roofs. One thing that I always like to look at is the tree damage. Uh, it's a good estimate of wind speed because not all structures are built the same, but most trees are the same. And these palm trees here are just shredded, topped. I mean, it takes a lot to do that to a palm tree. You know, I'd estimate at least 120 miles per hour with gust higher to do that right there. So here's a view of Barracoa looking down on the city. There's a lot of roof damage. Uh, over here, the roofs have completely collapsed in some areas. It'd be interesting to know what they come up with as far as estimated wind. I was inside of a building with windows shut, so I can only hear what was going on. It's hard for me to really gauge. But I'd say minimum 120. <clears throat> minimum. You know, probably a little bit more. If you look way in the distance out, there's a hill out there that was just full of lush trees, palm trees, as far as you could see. And now it's just shredded to pieces. There's this little stick sticking up. 
Uh, so the wind was really wicked through here. Just as far as you can see, things are shredded, roofs are gone. It's a mess. And this wasn't even the dirty side of the storm. This was the other side. We did get the eye. The eye went right over here. And, uh, and then the second half came, wasn't as bad as the first half. But we have survived another one. Here's the scene here this morning in Baracoa. Uh, complete destruction. Hey, I'm Let's swing around. You see a lot of rooftops missing. Uh, that mountain or that big hill up there that used to be full of palm trees and now they're just ripped apart. It's a scene of complete destruction here this morning. Um, as we walk through the streets, you can see just these buildings. This building collapsed completely. The storm surge came ripping through here with the 100 and plus mile per hour winds and caused complete, complete destruction. Well, when I do a damage survey, I always like to look at the trees and how the trees held up. And these trees are just, the tops are snapped right off of them. These palm trees here were in extreme wind. So I'm currently walking through Baracoa and trying to get an idea of what's going on on this side of town. And just look at this. Look at this vegetation. Everything is just shredded. Snapped in half. People are suffering. Um, look over here. This is like a plantation. Everything is, is shredded here. Right here, we're next to the sea, and all these uh, rocks and all this debris here was washed up from giant waves crashing here last night. All the roadways are blocked. Bridges are out. We're not real sure how we're gonna get out of here or when we're gonna get out of here. The rumor is that that is about So here we are, it's the day after Hurricane Matthew came through Baracoa, and uh, the word is that we are not going to get out of here for at least eight days. Um, the roads are washed out, the bridges are washed out, the airport is destroyed, uh, there's no way to get back to Havana uh, to get home. There's no way to get out of this city. It's a total disaster. So hopefully that's not true. Hopefully we get out of here sooner. I'll spin around, you can get an idea of what it looks like. We're right on the water. I mean, that wind came ripping off the water and just slammed into Baracoa. So, it's part of the game. Put yourself in these situations, you may not get out for a while. Uh, I mean, I got a good place to stay, but it's gonna be a long eight days. Uh, but it's nothing compared to what these people are going to have to go through. It's going to be months, months and months before they get back to some kind of normalcy. So here we are in the streets of Baracoa. And this is a school. You can see all the desks for the kids. And the entire roof is caved in. They're going to need some help getting all this back together.
So here it is, day two in Baracoa, Cuba. Uh, the situation here is getting very dire. Uh, people here need food and water. Uh, their supplies are gone. Their, a lot of their houses are gone. Um, this is day two, and this has only just begun. Things are going to be bad here, for, I think, for quite a while. Um, there's obviously no power. There's no communications with the outside world now. The roads, the two roads leading out, both the bridges are washed away. There's, there's basically no way to get out of here. Uh, for the tourists, they're working on getting an airplane, but they're trying to see if the runway is okay. There was damage to the runway. Uh, category 4 force winds will do that. So we're just trying to figure out uh, our next step here. Everyone's just kind of hanging about, trying to figure out when help will arrive. Uh, people need food, water. Uh, you know, most of their shelters, the roofs are gone on most of the houses here. We're still in Baracoa, and the situation here is starting to get uh, a bit desperate. Uh, behind me, these are all the tourists. They're all sitting in front of the hotel where we stayed. Uh, they're not going to have power here for a long time. Um, there's up the way there, all the power lines coming in, everything is down. Um, most of the houses here are destroyed. Uh, people are, are really, they're desperate. They need food, water, the necessities to live. Uh, they can't flush their toilets. Um, people are going to have to start going in the streets. Uh, things are not going to be sanitary here very soon. Um, I feel guilty almost that I'm, I'm just dying to get out of here knowing all these people are stuck here but I'm thinking the best thing I could do is just get the word out uh, share with the people in my country in the United States uh, what's going on and maybe we can help somehow. What I'm being told is that there's 86 tourists here and they're sending an airplane to get us all out of here either later today or tomorrow morning. Um, all communications are down, there's no internet, there's no power, there's no running water, there's nothing as far as infrastructure here right now. Raul Castro is supposed to be here later today and he's going to speak to the people and you know, let them know what he's going to do. So we're all real anxious to see what he has to say. Uh, but this, this town was, was destroyed. I mean, it was destroyed. So I haven't heard of any deaths. I mean, I don't know if there was any. It's possible. It was a very strong storm, maybe in the smaller communities right on the water. Uh, but I haven't heard any information like that. I can tell you everyone's doing the best they can do. The situation's getting pretty bad here. We're out of food and water. The people are starting to get a bit restless. Obviously, they've lost their homes. Um, everything's closed. It's a really dire situation. I'm sort of hanging out here because the rumor is that Raul Castro will be coming here in a little bit to speak to the people. This is what happens after major hurricanes when they hit towns and cities. Uh, it's, this is the ugly side of it for sure. Most of the structures are, are standing, but what you can't see is most of the roofs are gone. And uh, the infrastructure is destroyed. There's no communications with the outside world, there's nothing. I know I look horrible. Haven't, haven't showered in a few days, uh, haven't slept very well at all. Uh, put myself in this situation. But uh, it's pretty bad. Hmm. If you look at the trees up on the hill, that was full of trees and they are just shredded to nothing. Uh, everyone's asking for water. You know, I, 
I don't I only have a couple bottles of water I'm obviously I, I gotta save that for myself this is uh, becoming a survival situation here in Baracoa so uh, I don't know I don't know what else to say just I hope we get out of here today supposedly Raul is gonna be coming soon Tenemos a Raúl. 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 Tenemos a Raúl.